In the aftermath of the full auto war on YouTube, after so many casualties and cities burned to the ground, Hugo Martin made a post about buffing full auto. We all saw the clip of him trying to use it and getting bodied. Little bit of, um, little, little bit of drama going on in the community. Little, little bit of, uh, uh -oh. of uh, playful, playful drama, I should say. Not okay. real drama, playful okay. drama with the sticky bomb and the full auto. So there, there's the full auto crowd. There's the sticky bomb crowd. I was thinking about messing with the full auto this playthrough on Blood Swamps in honor of of uh, Mr. Mayo and those that support the full auto. Charge, uh-oh. Look who came out to play. Erectron, leave it for later. We shouldn't have done that full auto! Now, just charging in like that is not the way to use it, but we are where we are, and if this is gonna happen, we gotta be careful with it. You can put me on record as not having asked for this. I'm open to it, but if we're gonna be changing weapons, I would much rather see a nerf to lock-on rockets, and especially energy shield. I think there's no reason for a defensive mod that blocks all attacks all around you to also allow you to abuse it offensively. I think it should recharge slower, the dash should do less damage, and it should not hard falter. It can soft falter, but hard falters allow you to just dash, 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 and stunlock heavy demons in the most brain dead fashion. I don't like it. So full auto, what kind of change would I definitely welcome? First, a bug with full auto needs to be fixed. If you shoot all your sticky bombs, the combat shotgun is stuck in the mod cooldown timer even when in full auto mode. You shoot all your sticky bombs, switch to full auto, and now there's some strange delay where the gun won't fire at all. This still applies after getting your cooldown upgrades, your mod swap speed upgrade, and when using the melee mod swap trick to switch mods faster. The gun is just stuck in cooldown. And you can't hold the fire button while waiting for the cooldown to finish. The gun will just sit there not firing. You have to wait for the cooldown to end and then press the fire button. These two issues should be addressed before anything is done to the weapon. Thank you to Arrhythmia for bringing this to my attention. It shows you how little I use sticky bombs if I never noticed this. Now, actual improvements. Take away the zoom in. It serves no purpose other than to limit your visibility. And it's not like the Arbalist shot where you're aiming at a faraway target. Full auto is up in their face or mid-range at most, so this zoom in should definitely go away. Next, I would significantly reduce the de-transformation time. I think the starting transformation time is fine, since this isn't a quick switching weapon, and if they end up giving it a damage boost, it'll definitely be fine to have it spin up like this. Most of the single weapon strategies have mods with a windup, mobile turret, arbalist and destroyer blade, microwave beam, so keeping the windup of full auto makes sense. But the time it takes to wind down is really inconvenient. It would be so nice to be able to fire it and then immediately switch to another weapon. Because sometimes you're trying to tactically use full auto and something is coming at you and you gotta wait for the detransformation time before you can do anything. You can get around the recovery delay by holding the fire button as you switch to another weapon, but it would be nice if that weren't the only option. Especially since it's so awkward. The long recovery animation can also rob you of a life-saving glory kill. A tighter spread on full auto would be very welcome. It would help with using it at footsie's range, which would be very fun. Movement speed? I don't know. Should the upgrade completely take away the movement penalty? I honestly can't say. I'm personally fine with the movement penalty because I like the way that using full auto makes you move a bit differently to work around it. I think that's where some of the unique style comes from. I guess it depends on how powerful this thing is going to be. I support the movement penalty on the microwave beam because of the crazy stuff you can do with it. Full auto? I guess we'll have to see. I'm not pushing too strongly in either direction on this one. As for damage, let's be very careful. Single weapon strategies should not do more damage than weapon combos. The fun, fast-paced, quick-switching weapon variety should be rewarded with higher damage output. That's why I'm not a fan of lock-on rockets. It's why I don't want to buff mobile turret. Mobile turret does fine damage for players who don't engage in quick switching. You don't want to buff it to the point where the best players say, well, I don't need to do quick switching combos anymore, I'll just hold down the fire button on the mobile turret. And we don't want that to happen with full auto either. You could buff the damage of each shot, or more likely they'd increase the fire rate. Either of these options need to be subtle in their increases. Enough to feel the difference, but not enough to feel like you need to be using full auto. 
Bloodshot had an idea for a perk change that would provide a damage multiplier over time, and that could be cool if implemented correctly. You could consolidate the movement perks into one, and then add a new 6 point perk that adds a multiplier, where shots start doing 1.2, 1.4, 1.6 times the damage the longer you fire the weapon. That combined with a tighter spread would make it feel better to use as a straight up automatic weapon, but you would need to make this contingent upon holding the fire button, so you couldn't tap the button and just keep stacking it. If they stop firing, the multiplier resets. If there's concerns about throwing off the ammo economy with full auto doing more damage per shot the longer you fire it, maybe you could implement a firing rate multiplier instead so you're still burning the ammo. Any damage boost would have to stop at a max multiplier, and if they instead go with speeding up the fire rate through a multiplier, they would need to have a limit on that too. I'm personally more into the idea of an increased fire rate over a damage boost because I worry about a damage boost getting out of control. At least with a higher fire rate buff, the high damage would have an ammo cost. Finally, there's the ammo refill. I always thought it would be kinda cool if full auto kills also gave you plasma on top of shells. Fodder gives 2 cells, heavies give 10, super heavies give 25. Or you could get different ammo from different demon classes in addition to shells. Fodder gives 1 or 2 heavy cannon rounds, heavies give 10 plasma cells, and super heavies give 1 or 2 rockets. So full auto could be used even more tactically for ammo restocks. You'd have to be really careful with this stuff though. Full auto shouldn't be buffed to the level where it's forced into the meta. That's what I'm really afraid of here. High level and top level players saying they feel like full auto is so good now that they have to integrate it into their gameplay or else they're at a disadvantage. I really don't want that to happen. It should remain an optional weapon that is playstyle specific, but if you want to add some more benefits to it, fine. The majority of weapon mods in this game are viable on a high level, at least 80%, and that's huge. How many games do you know where this many weapons and strategies are implemented on the highest level? Some shooters have a meta focused on like two guns. So considering we have such high weapon mod representation in Doom Eternal, I think it's fine to have a few mods that get left behind on the higher levels and turn into niche strategies that are embraced by players who love them. Not every single mod has to be designed with the highest level of use in mind. And you don't want to end up over buffing a weapon mod that's given to new players on the first level of the game, when the game is trying to teach them so many new concepts. If full auto is so good that a new player can just run around with it melting everything, they aren't going to learn anything. I'm really curious what they're going to do here. Or maybe they won't do anything and it's just talk. Who knows? I'm the full auto guy so I have a lot of vested interest here. Crossing my fingers for the best.